Hello, friends, and welcome back to r slash pro revenge. The only time I ever flipped out on customers. I work at a small, independently owned laser tag arcade where we host parties of all kinds. You'd be surprised how many bachelor and bachelorette parties walk through our doors. I also recently got promoted to general manager. What follows is the most frightened I've ever been at my job. This was back in 2008, and I was the shift supervisor at the time. It was a very slow Friday afternoon, and I had two employees on the shift working with me. We had only one birthday party the entire afternoon. It was for a four-year-old boy. This is a red flag for us, as usually birthday parties are six-plus for us. Younger children aren't typically able to grasp how to really play laser tag and usually end up just wandering around the arena. The other reason it's a red flag is that people often use a child's birthday party as an excuse to have a massive family gathering at our facility. When we book parties, we ask how many people will be participating in laser tag, and our minimum is six participants. This party booked for six, but we had about 25 people show up. So time for the party has arrived and guests start walking in the door. As soon as the party mom arrives, I know what kind of group we have. The women have crazy hairstyles, the men arrive with do-rags and pants sagging down to their knees. These groups at our facility typically follow one of two paths. Either they're super laid back or they complain about absolutely everything. Since I'm posting here, I'm sure you can probably guess which of the two types this group was. They were a hassle right from the get-go. They'd booked for six people and complained when we gave them our smallest party room because they didn't tell us about the 19 guests that wouldn't be playing laser tag. They complained about the games, ripping them off, because our games take between one and four tokens, which is clearly marked on each game, and they expected us to be like the National Children's Party facility with the annoying mouse mascot. They're pretty standard complaints, but what came next was a doozy. They were in their party room when one of the guests, he was probably around 30, notices he lost his wedding ring. Well, no problem, I thought. These guys are the only ones here, so there's no way someone found it and walked off with it. Me and both my co-workers started looking for it, checking in all the usual places. Most people lose things somewhere in the laser tag arena. We'd been searching for about 20 minutes when the party mom came up to me. I think them girls stole my son's wedding ring. You need to search them now. Talking about both my co-workers. I'd worked with both of them for about a year, and they were the most innocent girls I'd ever met. If they were thieves, I would have noticed by now. I replied, sorry ma'am, I don't think anyone has stolen anything. We're bound to find the ring soon. Nobody besides your party has been in the entire facility since you got here. My employees aren't thieves, and I would appreciate it if you didn't accuse them as such. She huffed and we all went back to searching. Shortly after that, my co-workers found the ring right underneath the chair that the ring loser had been sitting on in the party room. We searched that room last because we thought that if someone in the party room lost a ring, they would search for it where he noticed it lost, right? My co-workers had heard the woman accuse them of stealing the ring, so they found it in the party room and told me I should be the one to find it and return it to the party so they didn't think my co-workers had stolen it and put it back to avoid getting caught. That's exactly what I did, and this is where the crap storm started. I picked up the ring and headed out to the lobby where everyone in the party was playing arcade games. I found the guy who lost the ring, handed it to him, and told him, We found your ring under your chair in the party room. Here you go. Immediately, it seemed like it was immediate anyway, the entire 25-person party surrounded me. The party mom yelled, That's bullcrap! You stole my son's wedding ring, and now you're giving it back to avoid being caught. I think I should call the police. And as soon as she said that, as if on cue, the rest of the party started screaming at me. I'm pretty spooked because I'm surrounded by these people, many of whom double me in body weight and they're yelling at me. I'd lost control of the situation and I was worried it could possibly turn violent. Now I'm pretty short for a guy at five foot six, especially when the average man in my town averages over six feet tall, but I've been told I'm actually pretty intimidating. I yell out, everybody shut the F up right now. And the whole group went silent. Look, you have your effing ring back. Nobody stole an effing thing from you. If you want to call the police, great. I'll call them for you and have you escorted off the property. So you can either leave right now or I'll call the police. To my amazement, they all became quiet and started to leave. However, on the way out, one lady came up to me for one last complaint. You guys are ripping people off. 
Five tickets for a Tootsie Roll? National Annoying Mouse Chain has their Tootsie Rolls for one ticket. That's bullcrap. I just looked at her and said with absolutely no expression, Get the F out of my store, lady. And she left. I phoned the owner immediately after it was over and he said, Good for you. That's exactly what I would have done. Good for you. Stand your ground. Places there to make money, not to cater to rude, obnoxious people. Don't want to hear my idea? Fine. Enjoy losing lots of money. This happened one and a half years ago. I was working for an equipment engineering company in the Netherlands, and we were just finishing a big machine to be delivered to Germany. This was around January, and we were having lots of snow. My job was to purchase all the parts, plan the assembly, and take care of the supply chain of the projects. This machine was in addition to an already working machine for this customer and needed to be delivered and installed on schedule for the next season. By the time the machine was finished, I'd arranged the transportation due to the size of the machine. The only option was to rent a few big open trailers and put it on sections and strap them down. The machines were mostly able to withstand a little bit of rain. All the electronic parts were wrapped in plastic and the bare metal axles were coated in grease so they wouldn't rust. To be extra sure, my manager ordered me to ask the trucking company to bring big plastic sheets to cover the top of the machines so they'd be extra safe due to the forecasted snow that week. By the time the trucks arrived to be loaded, me and my manager got into a conversation about the snow, which was still a big concern for us. I had a little light bulb moment and explained that we must be more concerned about the snow that already fell on the streets and were sprinkled with salt by the gritters. That snow would be picked up by the tires of the trucks and swinged into the machine. Salted water is way more damaging to metal, so my idea was to instead use the extra covers up on the top. We'd use them on the floor and create some sort of bathtub around it to prevent the splash salt from entering the machine. My manager wouldn't hear about my ideas and commanded me to just do my job and let the thinking be done by people who are allowed to think. So I shrugged and went back to my work. Fast forward one week, the machine arrived at the customer, and oh boy, did it have a lot of rust on it. All the axles, sprockets, and chains were just written off. There was no way to bring them back to decent condition. I didn't hear about this happening right away. It was when my manager came into my office full panic mode, asking me how fast I could buy X amount of axles, sprockets, and chains to be delivered in Germany. I recognized the type of axles he was talking about. And as calmly as I could, holding back an enormous grin, I asked him, Hmm, what do you need those for then? After that, I was taken more seriously by him, which was nice. I would never have thought of this problem slash solution, yet the moment you said it, it made perfect sense to me. And our last story. We will tell about the father of our OP, who is not as simple as he may seem. Redneck thinks it's funny to yank out mailboxes. My dad makes him pay. So way back in the day, mid-90s or so, my family lived in a log cabin on 10 acres of land in a rural area 10 minutes or so out of town. It wasn't totally the sticks, but you could definitely hear banjo music in the background sometimes. At the end of our nearly quarter mile long driveway was one of those roads that was also technically a state highway. In the morning, I'd trudge down to wait for the bus. When I got home, I'd grab the mail and carry it back until one Monday morning when I went out and noticed the mailbox was gone. On closer inspection, it looked like it had just been ripped out of the ground. Dad was obviously not pleased. He went to talk with the county sheriff who happened to live a mile down the road. Turns out it had been happening up and down the road for months. Someone was tossing a chain over mailboxes and yanking them out with their vehicle. He suspected a guy down the road with his great big lifted four-wheel drive truck but couldn't prove anything usually happened on Saturday and Sunday nights with people finding out the next morning. Also seems the nicer the mailbox, the bigger the target, and many had been hit multiple times. People had tried digging deeper, using more durable wood, etc. The guy just took it as a challenge and ripped them out again, soft, sandy ground, and his truck was a monster. Well, Dad said, challenge effing accepted. A bit about my father. He's a steel worker with an engineering background and a graduate degree. Built like a bear with four arms the size of my frickin' legs, most people looking at him would never think this monster of a man is also brilliant. But he is. The calm, cool type that almost never loses his temper. But wrong him, and God help you. So Dad goes to Lowe's and buys the fanciest, prettiest mailbox they sell. 
He then proceeds to install it on top of an 8-foot-long cylinder of 3-inch diameter hardened tool steel. But he wasn't done there. After digging down with post holers and dropping it in, he then filled it in with quickset concrete. To really sell it, he then used some strips of half-inch wood to cover the steel core of his now indestructible mailbox of doom. Primed and painted them so it looked like a standard 4-inch post. And even had my mom decorate it with flowers and stuff. He wanted it to be as tempting of a target as possible. Didn't even take a week. I went out for school in the morning and found the mailbox right where it should be. Attached to it was 30 feet of chain and an entire hitch assembly. Ripped right off the truck's frame, sheared the bolts. It was marvelous to behold. Sheriff gets called over and dies laughing when he sees it. He went to the house of the guy that was suspected and sure enough verified the damage to his truck matched. Fun fact, effing with a mailbox is a federal crime? As in you go to federal prison, not those cushy state places? Dad was unofficially rewarded by the sheriff's department with a few cases of beer and some venison. And after that, every deputy in town would flash him a thumbs up whenever they saw him. And our next story. Hey guys, thank you all for watching the video. I'll see you in the next one.